Mark Marriage Global Entrepreneurship Network, Patricia Acosta, Caribbean Association Startup Academy, Dominican Thanks. Republic, Moreno Thanks. Jackson, GEN Suriname, Carmen Sanchez, National Agency for Development, Uruguay. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, it's great to be here in Puerto Rico, and we appreciate uh, all of you for everything that you do on behalf of entrepreneurs uh, 365 days a year. So, uh, as Jonathan had mentioned, you know, one of the most important things um, that Jen is focused on, and what we kind of say we do, is we build one global entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so there's a number of ways that we do that, and there are a number of programs um, that kind of hone in and focus a little bit uh, on that effort. And so I'm joined today by uh, three colleagues who are leading uh, gen programs in their country. And what I wanted to do is have a kind of a short conversation here uh, just to give you a little bit of a sense for what that looks like on the ground and more importantly, you know, what impact these programs are having on the local ecosystems. So uh, I think I'll start with Carmen uh, from Uruguay. Um, Andy is uh, leading the Global Entrepreneurship Week campaign now for one year, I believe. Um, your organization does a lot on behalf of entrepreneurs uh, throughout Uruguay. Uh, can you tell me what it is that motivated Andy to get involved in Global Entrepreneurship Week and what you're seeing on the ground there? Okay, good morning everybody. Thanks, Mark. Um, yes, as we said, um, in 2023 was held the 16th edition of the Global Entrepreneurship Week, but the first uh, led by the National Agency for Development uh, and the Uruguayan Entrepreneurship Network, and we're reaching a record of participation in, in this week. Um, the last edition attacked a significant audience that was involved in more than 100 activities organized by more than 150 institutions uh, in the 19 departments of the country and with an estimated attendance of 15,000 uh, participants. Uh, the, su the success of the Global Entrepreneurship Week in Uruguay, uh, we think, was based on the work laid by the National Agency Development, uh, but seeking to infect institutions of the Uruguayan Entrepreneurship Network so that they join in with their own activities. In addition, it joined the SMS centers throughout the territory and a series of large companies like media, uh, education, financial institutions, and organizations not directly linked to the Uruguayan entrepreneurship ecosystem, like uh, Promoher, Google, Globant, the Bank of Uruguay, Equifas, the US Embassy, as well as other state organizations like Uruguay 21, Uruguay Innovation Hub, ministers and municipalities. We have a common physical space, uh, was available in Montevideo, the emblematic building of the Latin American Integration Association, which was the epicenter of the most of the activities in the capital. But also activities were at in municipalities, co-works, universities, hotels, in the Congress, at the World Trade Center, and as well as uh, in a bar where uh, an after party was held. We also had an important presence uh, in the rest of the country, with more than 50% of the activities being carried out outside the country's capital. And as we mentioned before, the week mobilized almost 15,000 participants, eager to acquire relevant knowledge to enhance the venture, establish connection in the business field, and improve themselves in various areas. It is worth highly uh, the variety of activities that took place during the week. As an example, motivation talks, guide tours, competition, trainings, mentoring, workshop, business round, interviews, fairs, and celebration. All these activities were available in a consolidated manner in a central landing page that facilitates access to the information for interest people. And finally, we also think it's uh, important to highlight the diversity of the audience reach. Um, not only um, people 
linked with the ecosystem, uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem, but also university population, girls, boys, and, and younger, and also all the, uh, older adults that they are uh, or want to start a business. Another aspect to highlight was the communication campaign that aimed to highlight the importance of the Entrepreneurship Week for the Uruguayan entrepreneurship public. It focused on showing the exciting support, highlighting national ventures and company, as well as highlighting the support available for entrepreneurship in Uruguay. We did a, a, a campaign that it calls, Did You Know What? with real success stories associated with support institution and were used to demonstrate the value of Uruguayan venture and inspire future entrepreneurs. The campaign was extended through social network, public roads, radio, and press, using a specific strategy to reach the international territory. So as we can see, the last Global Entrepreneurship Week in Uruguay was really success, exceeding all expectation in terms of participation, impact, and dissemination. And the work of the National Development Agency with the Uruguayan Entrepreneurship Network managed to position this event as a crucial reference for the country's entrepreneurship ecosystem. The diversity and quantity of activities um, Sorry. Carry out, demonstrate the commitment and vitality of the Uruguayan Entrepreneurship Network. The GWU not only meets its objectives of inspiring and supporting entrepreneurial people, but also stands as a key driver to strengthen and expand the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Uruguay. The success achieved in this first edition led by Ande sets a solid precedent for future initiatives and consolidates Uruguay's position as a fertile ground for innovation and entrepreneurship. Thank you, Thank you Carmen. Uh, you know, I just want to underscore a couple of points that Carmen made there uh, and also, uh, again, express Jen's appreciation for uh, the work that the agency is doing on behalf of entrepreneurs in Uruguay uh, and also coming in with a first year campaign that really kind of just jumped right out of the box, you know, more than 100 uh, events and activities. And as Carmen mentioned, I think you said 15,000 participants uh, in a relatively small country. Uh, and so that's, you know, the kind of that's the kind of engagement that we love to see within ecosystems. Uh, and so just just underscoring, you know, that effort, but then also the importance of reaching out across uh, not just the capital city, but throughout the country, uh, and also reaching new audiences, not just, you know, the entrepreneurs who are already kind of in the, uh, in the field and in the space, but reaching new audiences and engaging them. Um, I'm going to shift gears quickly here on a di different program and turn over to Moreno, uh, our managing director for Gen Suriname. And, uh, um, and ask you about your experience with Startup Huddle. For those of you who don't know, Startup Huddle is a program that Jen runs uh, in a number of different countries that is, um, uh, Jonathan likes to call it church for entrepreneurs, but um, uh, one way to think about it is uh, what we do is we get ecosystems to rally, community leaders to rally around their local entrepreneurs and to meet on a regular basis, whether that's weekly or monthly, uh, and to crowdsource, uh, crowdsource solutions to challenges that those entrepreneurs are facing. Moreno, I understand that you have a very interesting story about your connection to, to Startup Huddle. Can you share that? Yes. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Mark. Uh, indeed, uh, we started this church uh, in 2018. Um, it was actually, I was visiting the sunny island of uh, Jamaica, where I met this inspiring young and driven um, young leader called Michelle Samuels. At that time, she was the... Um, coordinator for the Caribbean for Startup Huddle. So we had an assignment that we had to ac um, execute on paper in terms of what are the initiatives that uh, we are doing in our country to support startups. And she was doing her presentation talking about Startup Huddle, St. Lucia. So after her presentation, I walk up to her, I tell her, you know, Michelle, this is what we need in Suriname because we need to support entrepreneur startups. So I, we go back to our respective countries, and I start, we start working together with the team of Jen, Cecilia, everyone, um, starting, shaping the, starting to shape that. So we actually started with our first startup huddle session in 2019, at the end of 2019. 
And we thought, oh, this is very good because we are bringing people together. We are, we are talking about entrepreneurship, giving feedback. And then March 2020, we get inside because we get the situation with COVID. And that's really where the agile mindset from Jen was very fundamental in pushing this forward. Because at that time, we thought, okay, we'll wait out for one month or two months to see this thing will pass. But we know it took almost two years. So what happened is that we shifted to online. And because people had a lot of, I would say, quote unquote, free time, they attended. So they learned more about these startups, starting building this um, ecosystem, and the impact that Startup Huddle has had uh, within Suriname itself, uh, and of course the region, is really that uh, startups really get the raw feedback from, from the community, uh, but also partnerships. For example, at one of these sessions, we had an entrepreneur who was sharing that he needed a website because he, was, he wanted to apply for a grant. And there was someone in the audience that was building websites, and he offered it to build it for him for free. So now, after two or three weeks, he has his website, he submits, he submits his grant, and he receives that grant. So he, his, his company it grows and grows, and after, I think, one and a half year, he gives back to the community by building a farm for a child care center. So when we're talking about building healthier ecosystems, this is really the, the way to do it. It's really collaborating, giving each other's opportunities, and, and, and ensuring that we are always there to showcase what we are doing because that creates more um, opportunities for everyone. Thank you. That's an amazing story. Uh, we've just got a couple of minutes left here, and uh, I want to turn to our, our third panelist, uh, Patricia, uh, from Dominican Republic. Uh, uh, you know, so as earlier, we uh, covered the story of uh, Uruguay uh, and the story of a first-year GEW host organization. Uh, Patricia, you've been leading GEW now for six, seven years, eight years. Can you tell us how you got involved and what you're seeing on the ground? Absolutely. Um, we were one of the first country, actually, who started GEW along with, you know, Jonathan and uh, Jen. And at that time, entrepreneurship was something that was discussed just by a group of people. And in about, in about um, 12 years ago, that's when we started really talking about entrepreneurship. We started building the, what it is now, the National Entrepreneurship Network in the country. And when I started in that role, at that time I was working at the government, the person who was running GW, he was like, Patricia, I cannot keep running this. You are the person to run this. You're running the National Entrepreneurship Network. And you need to keep going. And from then at the time, because he was just uh, working at the Ministry of Education, GW was something that was only being done at the universities. So we went from like just doing activities at the university to doing activities in different cities in different country in the country. So that's when we started evolving into what GW it is now. So it has been amazing that, and I was telling you behind stage how we went from thinking that GW was a competition of event to understanding that GW was a celebration. GW was celebrating entrepreneurs everywhere. And that's the, like, the story that I want to bring today because we understood that it was about building community. It was about building a network of people who wanted to bring entrepreneurs at the center of everything. And afterwards, we decided that the government was not enough. And that's when we started creating this organization, which is the one running GW now, because we wanted to bring opportunities to people who wanted to create events, but they didn't have a platform to create that event. So we built the platform. And this is what, what happened when you build community. You start finding the holes that the communities have. And when you start finding those holes, you start building things that can help the entrepreneurs continue growing. And this is when we started creating an entrepreneurship network that was doing events at university, went to doing events in Santo Domingo, which is our biggest, our capital city, to doing events in different cities around the country. So we are growing. We went from 20 events to now doing 100 plus events in a year. And we went from like only two organizations doing events to now having about 50 partners organizing events. We have people who do events the entire week. 
because they get so excited about what they're doing. And each year, we see the partners growing, we see the organizations growing, we see the entrepreneur community growing, we see all the holes also of what the entrepreneurs need kind of happening everywhere. And this is what GEW has brought up. And every time we come to this Congress, it's probably the best platform that we use to keep bringing new things into our country. And that's why we love networking with everyone here because it brings us the new things that we are missing and that we are lacking as a country to continue growing our entrepreneurship network. That's fantastic and amazing story. And just kind of to underscore uh, what we say at Gen for GEW is catalyze, don't organize. And so kind of hearing those three stories, um, you know, about scale and, you know, starting out and, and kind of rallying the community, rallying the ecosystems uh, and expanding and getting much more engagement as you go, whether it's GW or whether it's Startup Huddle. Uh, I think it's really impactful to see that. And we couldn't do it without um, our community and our network. And so please join me in, in uh, saying a thank you to our panelists this morning.